Imagine. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. This time round we want to speak about the upcoming Football Kenya Federation elections and one man who is seeking to get elected the president of FKF is in studio to share with us his vision for the sport in case he gets elected. His name is Tom Alila, not an unfamiliar uh, person as far as matters football is concerned. He served before as representative of Football Kenya Federation of Nyanza region and right now of course he's seeking now to get elected to replace the incumbent Nick Mwendo. I don't know how we will maneuver around to manage that considering that the situation right now, the atmosphere is not favorable to other candidates going by what they have said themselves. Robert Osoro, my able co-host, is also still with us. Tom, good to see you, man. It's been a long time. Where yeah. have you been? Thank you very much. I was in Kisumu uh, <laughs> talking with the three delegates uh, from Kisumu. <laughs> and uh, you've been getting actively involved in matters football as well because it's been, you know, a short span of around a few years before... Uh, 2013, 2016. Yes. I served as a NEC member for Nyanza. Yeah. Yes. So you are passionate about beach vo vo football. I understand it is still in existence but not very active like it was during uh, your tenure. How do you seek reviving it? I think the, the structures are there. We are, when I was a NEC member, uh, when now I moved to, uh, I became now chairman for <laughs> beach football and futsal. Mm -hmm. So we had yeah. a team in uh, Coast. Uh, they have been playing beach football for some time uh, the, the, in the Coast branch. Uh, there are teams there. for Even we went to Tanzania for the competition uh, in the preceding year. So it's something that is uh, I'm really av advocating uh, for. Since where I, I come from in 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 uh, Nyanza, the yes. Lake Victoria area, there there's uh, so many beaches that the youth uh, will put in structures and uh, curriculum uh, according to FIFA rules, so that they can also uh, register teams and can participate. Getting for them a coach uh, who is uh, vast with the beach football uh, matters, and then we start. Yes, those are one of my pillars that I'm running on, and also running on the issue of the uh, women football. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, been. Uh, uh, you can remember in the last past they've been doing very well, but we need to professionalize it. Um, I think the way it was being run was not so good because when we, when they go to camp, you find when the women team go to camp, and uh, they the ones playing in the uh, Kenya team. The allowances normally vary. You find them, they are being paid 500 and the uh, Arambistas people are paying 10,000. Those are the issues that we need to... Because if so they are playing disparity. for the national team, the disparity uh, in, youth, in the women football, it needs to be structured. They are also playing for uh, the national team. So those allowances need to be at par. Be yes. Before we get into the deeper, deeper inside of women football and beach football, Tom, mm -hmm. for the audience and me, we will want to understand you are running now for the Football Kenya presidency. That's a big job that you are going for it. And everyone out there has got that dream of what football in Kenya is and what football in Kenya should be and where we should be at the moment. What is that dream for you? Basically, as I started before, where I come from in Nyanza and Western, those are the bedrock of football in this country. And now football is played in 47 countries. Yes. What I wanted to do is to work with the 47 counties so that we can put a curriculum mm -hmm. on a long-term program of youth. In schools, we make them centers. Mm -hmm. Universities are there and uh, 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 secondary schools. So we have FIFA curriculum that development of football from those onset for five years yeah. up to that's a long-term program mm -hmm. with the counties now you've seen the mud rush for making surfaces playing mm -hmm. surfaces yes. in the stadium for all 47 counties mm -hmm. and indeed they have uh, 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 they have uh, a ministry of sports uh, we, we will be working with them so that we can achieve this so that if we have a long-term program for developing uh, the youth team it will be able to uh, feed the other leagues and Arambistas for whole 47 counties. Yeah. Uh, that is what 
I'm running. I'm a, those are one of the pillars I'm running. Uh, I've offered myself to uh, to to do when yeah. I'm elected as president of FKF. So we've seen other candidates who are also seeking uh, to get elected the president of Football Kenya Federation crying foul mm -hmm. over a lack of same level playing ground and you know that will favor the fair and transparent outcome. But you've said that you know elections should take place in August this year. Actually, we are in August. Today is first. No, uh, all how possible is that? How <laughs> no, all I was saying is yes. that we were putting pressure so that <laughs> they can put uh, their 96 delegates. Yeah, yeah. And this delegate, I uh, hear um, next week, uh, the president is supposed to do an announcement so that the branch elections are repeated again. So that many people that were left out will be able to now uh, join. Hmm. Doing the sub-branch uh, uh, elections is normally, for 270 uh, constituencies, will be kind, kind of cumbersome. Yeah. It's better to do the branch uh, elections first. Let the people who are locked out during that time because it seems it was uh, suiting one, one candidate. So let them, football is about fair play. Let yes. them be included, those mm -hmm. who want to run. Yeah. And then they can choose these delegates mm -hmm. in a more proper manner. And I think uh, that is going to happen. That would be a good milestone. Yeah. And then they can call the stakeholders together, the people who are running, so that we can put a proper and fair electoral code so that we can do these elections. Mm -hmm. With the COVID issue now, elections can be done electronically. Yes. Yeah, they can be done with, if 96 delegates can be able to do social distancing in a hall and they yeah. uh, do their vote. It's possible once we put in these codes and regulation so that it is fair play, that all candidates can come, they will be satisfied that they can be running on a proper uh, platform. Kenyans are tired of this FKF wrangles and all yes. that. Uh, think they need to start selling their policies, my colleagues that we are running with. It, it, so it, that, is, uh, it is good you have said that yeah. Kenyans are tired of yeah. the FKF wrangles. Yes. All the time we are actually in that circle, yes. FKF wrangles, FKF wrangles. Mm. How can you get them all off in that you start with an open, fresh office that does not have any problems, in that we can say, let's forgive and forget, this one is done, let's start afresh. Yeah, the wrangles come because of the interest. Uh, in my opinion, yes. I think if you are running for FKF uh, presidency, you should not be having any interest that you have a football club that you own. Uh -huh. uh, that yes. brings uh, mm -hmm. conflict of interest. Yeah. The people who are running for this office should be able to work for all teams, yes. whether in top tier league, uh, second division, NSL. They should not have any interest as a regulator. You yes. need to be going for the president to work for the whole leagues, the properties of FKF. Those are the leagues. The properties of FKF are the leagues. That's what they own. Yeah. And they regulate football in the whole 47 counties. Okay. So wrangles come in when they are now interest, different interest and people who own clubs that they want to push in and all that. But for me, when I was elected as a NEC member for Nyanza, I managed to push a community club, that is Moroni Youth, uh, to play in uh, 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 Kenya Premier League. I also managed to make sure that the teams which were playing in uh, Kenya Premier League, that is Sony Sugar, where I come from, yeah. uh, Mumias, uh, and you can see they have really gone down. They were regular relegated yeah. and uh, there's now a, a club that was called Palos mm -hmm. is now called Kisumu All-Stars I think they oh. will be playing very soon to know who comes yeah. with the Busia United who comes now to the league mm -hmm. uh, to play for uh, Kenya Premier League yeah. apparently now there is no team from Nyanza that is you can say we'll go to until th th that playoff is done mm -hmm. so those wrangles are the yeah. ones which interests and yes. the major one mm -hmm. is KPL yeah Football Kenya Federation wrangle. That one has been the major issue. For you, getting on to the office, if you are elected, how will you play that card to make sure that Kenya Premier League and Football Kenya Federation are running in one, one voice, are working in one voice and working as a team? Uh, since uh, Kenya Premier League is owned by FKF, in my opinion, if I'm elected, I will extend the contract. But I will put... Uh, 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 I will put... Uh, addendums yes. in that all those teams which are participating in uh, FKF Premier League, they form a company, all of them, so that they can run the league in a more uh, transparent manner mm -hmm. with FK, under FKF. Yes. yes, because you've been seeing issues of sponsorship is a problem because even this issue of sponsorship that is now going on, mm -hmm. the players which are in top tier league, that is uh, 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 Kenya Premier League, yeah. they should know what FKF is selling. 
Yeah. Yeah. They should know how much because they are selling properties that they have, which yeah. is KPL top tier league. Mm -hmm. There's uh, NSL, there's FKF Division One, and all the women football. Those are what they own, and those are what those companies are interested in in terms of uh, media rights and what they will be getting in terms of advertisement. Yeah. So it is imperative that all these teams that are in KPL must be seen, must be shown the contract mm -hmm. so that they can see what they are really entering into. Yeah. I think that would bring transparency. It's a good thing to have sponsorship because there is none now, mm -hmm. but it should be done in a more structured manner so that they know that this is, this is the amount of the money that we are signing off. Mm -hmm. Even though if the contract has uh, disclosed an issue, which should not be disclosed, yes. but the nitty gritty mm -hmm. on issues of matches that they are selling, mm -hmm. because that's what the, whatever Bet King or whoever is buying those rights are interested in, yes. they must know. Yes. Osoro, you and mm -hmm. I have been here and we've been preaching objectivity. No yes. candidate we are associated with, it's glad Tom is coming through. But yes. there are a lot of candidates yes. uh, who have declared the interest to get elected FKF president. Sam Nyamweya, you know, the former president, yes. uh, Nicholas Musonye, the long serving football administrator. He also served as Secretary General of Sekafa. You know, Herbert Mashiro, the renowned football commentator. Yes. Bonfas Oseno, the football writer. Yes. A lot of them. But I think there is a question coming in through from one polar to he says i like alila's authority on tv mm. but having heard of him and the other candidates who have been you know the usual names in kenyan football what new what exceptional agenda does he have in store yeah, so when you are starting the program, I started outlining my agenda that I want to do. <laughs> Maybe he wants to hear exceptional agenda. <laughs> exceptional agenda. I've mentioned the issues of uh, the things. Players' welfare is very imperative because without players, uh, there is no football. Without playing surfaces, those are the raw materials in football. Those are the issues that I want to run on and improve. And issues of sponsorship and training of referees, coaches, and uh, working with the counties. Yes. Those are my main objectives. Yeah. Eh? And also to improve issues of, uh, if I'm answering, issues of women football. Mm -hmm. And the long-term youth program, development of youth. Because you can see, you, you, even when these players, are, according to FIFA rules, when they go out, mm -hmm. the places where they got developed normally, when they now play professional football, it's normally one check. Because yeah. where the footballers were developed in an early age, they normally give preferences, even if now they are playing in EPL. Yes. So if we put those structures, you can find Kenya's 50 million population. A country like Ivory Coast has only maybe 15 or 20, but they have 60 people playing in EPL, yet yeah. us we have only five. True. So those are the disparities that I want to correct mm -hmm. by having a proper development team a structure from uh, these 47 countries, curriculum-based, with FIFA working with teachers and all that. Yeah. And then we should be able to improve. It cannot be done in four years. But if we have a long-term programs, then Arambe Star's uh, selection will not be done only in Nairobi, the way it's being done. Yeah. It will be all over the country because the t talents are there. That Corporate. is my, uh, that's what I stand for. Corporate responsibilities are an essential aspect as far as growth of any sporting discipline is concerned. We've had corporates who are scared of investing in Kenyan sports because of the accountability concern i don't know for you maybe what new are you bringing on board that will entice these corporates to start coming back into kenyan football because long time ago we saw the likes of safaricom though right now as you speak there is chapadimba being sponsored by you know the uh, safaricom leading mobile service provider locally how, how how do you see going about it to you know revive the corporate uh, support of Kenyan sports and especially football which you seek to serve? Yeah, corporate structures were dragging their feet because of the formation of the way the, the teams are formed, uh, the clubs are formed. Uh, clubs like, big clubs like Gormai and FC Leopard should be limited company. They must have a small other company which is limited by liability, which means that there are directors that these corporates can normally deal with yes. in terms of structuring uh, uh, sponsorship. But when they are just wholesome like that, it's corporate find hard to deal how to engage them if there's not that proper structure. Yeah. Those are the issues that I want to outline. You can see Kenya Premier League has run football very well because it's a limited company. liability company, which it has directors. So corporate circles, they prefer to deal in such issues, you know, where there's engagement in corporate levels. Yeah. Yeah? In terms of 
if they are they don't do a b c d then they can be recourse yeah. uh, but when it is amorphous like we have in our teams i think the big clubs like fc and gormai have been trying to work out on that yeah. so that they can have directors mm -hmm. uh, and even what i was suggesting in kpl if the league the, the the clubs that are playing in KPL, mm -hmm. they form a company. Mm -hmm. It will be easy to structure sponsorship. But when they are more fast like that, it's become a problem. So, yes. calf licensing yes. is a priority for you. Exactly. To help these clubs. Yes. It will be able to help the clubs yeah. and restructure so that they can also ex exploit their rights in terms of media and other, uh, other sponsorship uh, yeah. uh, programs. Yeah. yeah. You can see counties, countries like uh, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, and all that. Yeah. Normally, they ex the, the, the national team exploits those rights themselves. Yes. Yeah. With different uh, com uh, TV companies or different sponsorship. Yeah. So those are the issues that we want to bring in. So which means you are not reading from the same script with Nick Mwenda, the current boss, because for him, uh, the tenure for Kenya Premier League Limited, you know, the likes of Jack Oguda, Franco Coates, is coming to an end in September this year. And that's why they're pushing for the top tier to be run and managed by Football Kenya Federation independent team. And of course, the league now getting renamed to FKF Premier League, considering that now they ha we have a new sponsor in Bet King. For you, you're saying that KPL has done a commendable job. For them, they hold contrary opinion. Who is right? Uh, we, I don't want to drag myself on who is right and who is wrong, but all, I, all I'm saying is yes. that uh, KF, uh, Kenya Top Tier League KPL yeah. is a property of FKF, but they need to have now some different structures mm -hmm. on how that is run under FKF. Mm -hmm. Because FKF would be, as a regulator, it will be overwhelmed by running such leagues. Yes. It's better now to decentralize them mm -hmm. and putting what I'm saying, they become a company the way yeah. KPL it has. I know they've been having issues on who, how they operate and all that mm -hmm. because of the contract they were in, in that time, yes. which other federations have been, other people who came in, even in our time, we used to have push and pull all the time. Because yeah. they say, we have to go this way. But then them, they say, ah, this is the right way to go. Yeah. But if those issues are structured, then we can, we'll be home and dry. Uh, FKF is a regulator. Yeah. Even though they own those properties. Yeah. But they can decentralize it to be a company. KPL can just be a company. But working under FKF. Yeah. Yeah. That is my opinion. But they have uh. the whole mandate of running and managing Kenyan football in general which means they can do whatever they want. I mean, under FKF, yeah, they should be, those little nitty gritty structures must be uh, sorted out before now you give out uh, th that independency. But they work under FKF, that's yeah. the constitution. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a team that met a few weeks ago, led by, you know, uh, Sami Shole, yeah. former deputy president, of Football Kenya Federation alongside, you know, Lord Vikaduda, Gormaya, Chief Executive Officer, you know, Tuaham Barak, coastal based uh, businessman and football administrator as well. And they are calling themselves a caucus that will seek to produce one formidable candidate that would unseat the incumbent Nick Mwendo. How comes you're not part of them? Uh, well, uh, for me, I prefer selling my own ideas <laughs> on my own. But yes. uh, if they can be talking, because they are also stakeholders in football. Yes. Uh, but we will be. It will be interesting to know who goes for which. Who will be the running? Who will be running for presidency? And who will be the running, uh, mate. The running mate? Yeah. And they need to have. I don't know. I, I really. Have, I am not access to what structures they are having with that kind of yeah. engagement. But for me personally, as Tom. I prefer to sell my policies and talk to delegates what I can do for them uh, yeah. as an uh, independent candidate. Uh, uh, I don't <laughs> criticize that as much, yeah. but for me, I will be running on my own, uh, uh, on my own accord. So you're uh, not seeking any like-minded uh, partnerships? I think if they put the stakeholders meetings a call, then I'm, 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 I, we can talk uh, and we'll be able to agree on where yeah. we go. Because there are serious stakeholders also in the game. Yeah. For football, uh, any sport to function in a country, the football, the major stakeholders in football have to work one on one with the government yes. of the day, the government in power of the day. Here in Kenya, for a very long time, most of the time, our football leaders are at loggerheads with the government. We can have a chance that the government gave uh, Football Kenya Federation money to go to the Africa Cup of Nations. The audit is done. 
the, the Football Kenya Federation have problems with government concerning accountability. But not even finances, only that, but you're bringing in the issue of the counties, working with the county governments and all that. As a leading candidate going on to these elections, what will be your link between government and Football Kenya Federation? How will you make it work together and talk in one voice? I think the government is one of the biggest sponsors in football, or in, in, in football or and in sports matters. Yeah. Even when the federation is normally stuck, the government comes in. Mm -hmm. It would be imperative for them to be, especially for me, running for president. Yes. We will be working very closely with the government yeah. so that we can follow those rules that they need especially when they give their money and it is used in a proper manner. Yeah. There is no bigger sponsor than the government of mm -hmm. Kenya. And you've seen the government went, for the first time in this country, uh, the government went and put in, uh, 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 in our constitution an arbitration, which is called SDT. Yes. It, very few countries have that to sort out uh, arbitration issues in football. Mm -hmm. I think that is a big milestone. It's constituted in our constitution mm -hmm. and decisions which they normally give even if FKF have problems they run there mm -hmm. if other stakeholders also have problems they run there yeah. so it's a big milestone and it, all the decisions that they make needs to be respected because mm -hmm. uh, our constitution is about FIFA yeah yeah so FIFA need to know that we have sports dispute resolution mechanism in yeah. that SDT which must be respected yeah yeah and it is in law yeah. And now the major part for me is uh, professionalism. Yeah. I, th I think uh, in Kenya the first sports organization was registered back in 40, 1946 and we have had sports events coming all the way up to today. But there is no major sport in Kenya that you can say that we have pure professionals or major professionals playing in that sport. How are you planning to make football in Kenya become a professional sport in that? Many kids can dream and say that my dream is to play football as a professional. Yes, with the ambition that I was talking about, mm -hmm. like when I was giving an example of where I come from mm -hmm. and in Western side where football, a lot of footballers, uh, even yes. in this FKF uh, mm -hmm. leagues, yes. most of them are managed from people from Western and Nyanza yes. <laughs> and mm -hmm. also other places. Mm -hmm. But if you have a sound if you, uh, program, the yeah. curriculum I'm talking about, about development, yes. and it is well structured, yeah. we should be able to achieve all these issues mm -hmm. uh, if it's done in a proper manner with the counties and all that, with these mm -hmm. curriculums that FIFA has put for development yeah. of football. Mm -hmm. If it is run to the letter, then we should be able to excel. Other countries have already excelled mm -hmm. uh, in this by having a long-term youth program that mm -hmm. can feed the other leagues yeah. uh, for these properties I keep on talking about that the FKF owns. Mm -hmm. They will be having, uh, they will have the counties competing among others. Uh, mm -hmm. Then talent are also seen. Coaching will be done in a proper way because there are teachers now in schools and all that. They're easier to train because they understand. Mm -hmm. And also football is about <laughs> making playing surfaces. You cannot just have major stadiums, but you don't. If you're going to, I'm proposing to develop in schools, maybe if they are done half fields, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for training during those curriculums. We make for them proper surfaces, like the one we did in Kisumu. It's one of the top class surfaces of football. It was really done very well. And if we can do them, maybe half fields in schools, mm -hmm. then skills will be there because you cannot start from grass and mm -hmm. it's not even mm -hmm. even when you're passing the ball yes. you get a lot of injuries mm -hmm. so those are the issues that i want to propagate mm -hmm. and i can achieve them Tom, i've just realized you are skeptical in your answers mm -hmm. and uh, you, you are sort of reluctant to share the finer details of your candidacy but it looks like most of the people watching are interested in knowing who your running mate is my good friend oliver Bob Morgan, the top photographer for sports in town, is asking, who is your running mate and what's your take on, you know, Bet King sponsoring uh, Kenyan football, bearing in mind that some teams have rejected the money? First of all, who are you picking as your running mate? Uh, we're still early. We are still <laughs> talking. We are, we are talking with... Uh, we, we, are, we, are, are on. we are negotiating. I need to come up with... Uh, uh, very soon I will unveil my running mate. Uh, according to Rupert, you still football issues of electoral code is still in a limbo. We yes. don't know when the elections are going to be done and all that. But it also gives me time to look around and find who can be suitable as my running mate. On issues of Bet King, the way I st stated here, if I'm answering uh, the person who has asked the question, 
those agreements that FKF entered, even though there's now no neck, the president yes. has got no authority to engage. It has to be approved by, all these issues must be approved by NEC. If at all they did that with Bet King, but uh -huh. when yeah. they were unveiling the, uh, the the sponsorship, I didn't see uh, NEC members. I just uh -huh. saw uh, the president. I didn't even see the Bet King people. Yeah. But uh, that's why I'm insisting that KPL top clubs must have this agreement and scrutinize on what FKF is selling. Yeah. They must know and scrutinize and ask those hard questions. That's yeah. why you see they are shying away because probably it's a campaign gimmick. Or uh, we, even uh, might be even true. media people, it could yes, be true. true. Yeah. I've not seen the contract. I would yeah. be wrong to say start mm -hmm. criticizing it. Yes. But since there was no sponsorship in place, I support if they can come in in a clean manner so that all these FKF Premier League clubs can scrutinize that contract. Yeah. That's why, all I can Why should say. other teams reject the money in the event that the sponsorship is legitimate? Uh, legitimate. Uh, all I heard in the newspapers from the media that the money were transferred, but I, I've, never, I've not heard anybody confirming that they have gotten. Mm -hmm. That's why it would be improper for Maybe me. Maybe as a candidate, you ought to have been in contact with those clubs and inquire further. All I want like the team you support, Gormaya. <laughs> I know my. I know. I, <laughs> when you are running for FK president, you, 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 you are neutral. You cannot say that Gormaya is my team. Yeah. But I think one of the top tier uh, uh, league, uh, uh, Ambrose Rachir, I think went to the federation to scrutinize uh, that contract. But I've never heard him make any statement about it. Yes. Or I also heard my friend in Sopa uh, Parker uh, Kalekwa saying that uh, they have seen uh, those paperwork, mm -hmm. but we've not seen really the nitty gritty yes. in oh. that sponsorship. Yes. Uh, all I'm saying, it needs to be transparent. Let the KPL teams scrutinize it and ask those pertinent questions in it. Mm -hmm. I, spoke, I spoke to Ambrose Rachir uh, a month ago and he said that, you know, their annual spending is almost over 10 million. Mm -hmm. And considering the money awarded to the league sponsor is, you know, very dismal. Uh, is there a way that you seek to go about, you know, increasing the amount awarded to the team that uh, gets an opportunity to be crowned the champions of the top tier? Because what you spent in a year is surpasses what you get if you win the league. Is yeah. it that funny? Yeah, it is. It needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> Still all goes to structuring mm -hmm. in, in uh, this sponsorship because some companies come in to use those big, big clubs to market whatever they want to do in betting and all that. That's mm -hmm. why it is imperative they scrutinize. And they have huge bud budgets in that you can see they have not paid players for a very long time. Yeah. And Player goes uh, to six, eight go months. To six, eight months. Yes. That's why it is better for them to scrutinize. What are these? Uh, what are these matches K K FKF is selling, and what are these rights for media? Uh, mm -hmm. What are the percentages of? If, even though the contractor has non-disclosure issues, which mm -hmm. we don't need to do, what percentage the federation is getting and the person who brought in? Mm -hmm. It's none of our business. But they need to scrutinize and see what is in there for them. Yeah. You see, like sp super sports uh, sponsorship, it was well structured. And they could budget for it. It was something that was open. And they could say, we are buying this. If you play 308 matches, this is what we are going to pay. And on the media rights, if we beam all these matches, this is what we are going to pay. So <laughs> for this, I've not seen. It, and, it, would, it, would, it would be difficult for me to comment on yeah. a, an agreement that... Uh, a, a, on an agreement that I've not seen. But if I'm elected, I would structure that. It would be more transparent uh, than this. Uh, it would be a thorough contract which would be going for even public to scrutinize. What you and I know is. that you know several Kenyans are passionate about European football, English Premier League, and considering that you know today Arsenal is playing against Chelsea, Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Yeah. If there was a league action at that particular time, most of them wouldn't watch go to Nyayo National Stadium for a flight like Thai, pitting FC Leopards against Madari, and they would, you know, uh, uh, cut the proceedings of what is happening overseas. I don't know, there is this aspect of value for your money. I'm coming to the stadium, what will I get? Of course, I'm giving 200 bob to watch a game of a packer against Chemil Sugar. Is there a way you seek to go about it in terms of ensuring that, you know, fans get, you know, what they expect 
the reciprocation of what they give as uh, entrant fee to catch a league action because this uh, second tier games like you, you know NSL, national super uh, league uh, yeah. and, and even uh, games that were being organized by Hussein Mohammed yeah. extreme super challenge mm -hmm. used to attract huge crowds yeah. and like Kenyan Premier League even when Arambe Stars is playing against let's say Tanzania if it's not free entry most fans won't show up yeah because what has been the problem first considering that you've served football before and coming from that point you might be having if i can start with kpl you know the biggest uh, clubs that are following is gormaya and uh, afc uh, yeah. most of these clubs are corporate sponsored and some of them are personal uh, 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 owned by private people yeah. like uh, uh, sofa parker and all the rest yeah. uh, gormaya and uh, uh, and uh, FC Leopard traditionally has got very many uh, funds. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying that if we start these issues of the counties and we start mm -hmm. those, uh, the, 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 the system I'm talking about, mm -hmm. they will be owning those clubs mm -hmm. and they will know that these are our clubs mm -hmm. that are going to uh, fight inter county and all that. Yeah. They will attract a lot of uh, crowd. So mm -hmm. they will own. That's why you find uh, Dimba, Super Dimba. They were Chapa going Dimba. through Chapa Dimba, they were yeah. going through teams which are in the countryside yeah. so it was a lot of funds used to come because they own they know those players mm -hmm. yeah? culturally, they, culturally yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. there yeah. so if we go through that route then we'll be bringing people back to the stadium mm -hmm. yeah that they'll be owning these teams from mm -hmm. machinani and in counties okay. yeah so how do you rate nick mwendo um uh, he's done his beats i think uh, there are things that he has done uh, i don't want to be a critic of criticism but there are things that he has done when he was uh, uh, FKF president I don't want to bring in and drag issues <laughs> on what he has done I think Kenyans have seen what he has done for themselves okay. and um, during his tenure uh, he, also, he has also things that he has achieved by putting uh, 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 fed, uh, when we were in office, we didn't have a place to meet. We used to meet at the <laughs> swimming pool uh, yeah. during Yamoya's time. But now you have an office. An office yeah. is something you give credit where it's due. Yeah. And they the logistical have a aspect house. of the game, yeah. allowances this, are being paid in time. Yeah, those issues. But uh, 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 to him, again, he should now, he's running for his second uh, uh, term, mm -hmm. should be able to tell Kenyans what he has achieved, what he promised, mm -hmm. uh, and what he didn't do. Uh, yeah. And what is now going to do again yes. uh, in this coming uh, election, so that people can delegates can weigh and say, ah, if these are the correct th those things that you promised when you were elected, uh, and you did half, mm -hmm. then <laughs> you should be able to explain to the delegates what is going to improve. Uh, but as we are now starting, we are selling now our policies. What we will do uh, different from yeah. him. So I think he needs to come and tell Kenyans, he gives the Kenyans a scorecard on what he has done uh, and delegate. Yeah. And consider yeah. and even politics. all these colleagues of mine that are running, they need to come and start selling what they will do differently. Uh, the delegates must see the people they are choosing. That's why even uh, I'm propagate these issues of uh, people who were elected with Nick. Uh, that uh, they think that if Nick is elected, then they will have an easy ride. Automatic, Automatic ride. easy ride. Yeah. They need to start hitting the ground and talk to these delegates. These delegates are not voting machines. Because there are some people that are just waiting that it will be a suit. Yeah? Once Nick is elected, all those votes they won't is going to on ride on it. It is not going to be... Uh, they must show what they are worth. Yeah? And they need to show what they have done yeah? to the delegates. And delegates should not be used as voting machines. They should weigh each and everybody running and then they choose the best person to run football in this country. Politics has got no, you know, permanent uh, friendship and enmity. Mm. Uh, is there a probability that you can work again with Sam Nyamwea? He's also seeking to get elected the president and you served under him some time back between 2013 to 2016? I think I want to cut on my own image as Tom. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say that. Uh, but negotiations, I'm open to negotiations. Yeah. But I want to cut my own image, yeah. not being lumped by, uh, oh, I worked with Tuan. So I think he did his bit also. He yeah. should also come and say what is running for president, what yeah. is going to do differently. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I served as a NEC member and the achievements that I did when I was a NEC member, I was... Uh, you saw I, I was involved in bringing Kisumu Stadium, which is being played. The surface is one of the best surfaces in this country, even though the walls, the county, were, they could not do them. But it's a good surface. 
uh, and bringing all those community clubs like Muroni Youth and this Palos now change Kisumu All Stars mm -hmm. have achievements that I've done. So yeah. all these people also need to come and say what they have done. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Tom, this is your camera. In the next few seconds, you are parting shot to Kenyan Football Fraternity uh, with regards to what you seek to do for yeah. Kenyan football in case elected FKF president. Just uh, give your final words. I'm asking the president of football, uh, FKF president, to call stakeholders meeting so that we can put this electoral code with all stakeholders. Football is not about abusing one another and uh, calling names. We need to reason out and put this electoral code so that the elections can be free and fair. He's now saying he's going to do the uh, branch elections. Everybody needs to be included in football. Once you have done the uh, certificate of good conduct and mm -hmm. EACC approval, the other ones really don't matter. Mm -hmm. Let, football is about fair play. Let mm -hmm. everybody come in and uh, say what he can do differently. The delegates, I'm also appealing to them not to be used, I've said, to be voting machines. Yes. Let them check each one of us who is running for these offices and let the best man come with the policies that they can work with. They need to sell their, 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 their what they are standing for and what they can do different from the, uh, the, the president who is currently there. And that's all I can appeal to them, that the election should be free and fair, fair and uh, 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 the delegates should use their imagination eh, to, to, to ask hard questions with these candidates who are running, that they will do things differently mm -hmm. from whatever they are talking or they are selling. That's all I can tell them. Excellent conversation with mm -hmm. Tom Alila, a man who is seeking to get elected the president of Football Kenya Federation. He served as FKF NEC representative in Nyanza and he says if elected he will revive you know, the dwindling standards of beach football and of course he's very optimistic of winning saying that you know, he will be unveiling his running mate very soon and open to negotiations from other candidates but of course just urging them to sell their agenda imperatively and tell the delegates what they have in store for Kenyan football in case they get the mandate to run, you know, the Kenyan soccer. It's been an honor having you on board. Thank Tom, you very thank much. Thank you for yeah. coming through and we wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Hopefully you will not fail to pick calls after getting elected when we call I mean, you back What to... you see is what you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll be taking the calls. Yeah. <laughs> if I call you, you'll pick. Not necessarily, I don't have to go. I will to be looking for you, not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is the tagline on Y254 for Max Olwasike. Is my name Osoro Robert as well. Is here with us. We're still here until 3 o'clock. Of course, Arsenal against Chelsea coming later on on KBC Channel 1, 7.30 T's FA Cup final. What a pulsating clash. Of course, we shall be here to give you the previews of what you expect and other international football headlines. Stay tuned. Don't go away. It's the touchline.